Hey there, in this short video I'm going to show you how you can run a subquery project inside subquery itself. So basically you'd want to do this if you don't have your own infrastructure. You can get subquery to run the nodes and the queries on your behalf. So if we take a quick look, you can see here we'll click into projects. I've got a sample project here up and running. If I open this up, what we're going to do is go ahead and view this subquery in an explorer and then if we go to the playground and hit run you'll see that we're running this query here and the results are returned where we fetch the block height on polka dot mainnet so let's see how we can achieve this let's go back to our home page here and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create our own project first of all. So let's go into command line here. I'm going to run the ever familiar command of subql init. Let's go starter and we'll go subql hello world. Let's just go enter enter because these are not mandatory except for the author field. And there we go. Now let's change directory into our sub query hello world and we'll run the obligatory yarn install then we'll run yarn code gen and finally yarn build now that's all I'll do for now I won't go and run a docker compose because I don't want to run this project in docker I want to run it inside sub query so the next thing we want to do is with the project we've got created I've got to push this into github so let's go into github I'll go into my repository here and we'll go and create a new one so let's go new and I'm going to call this sub ql like so and I'll leave everything else as default just for this demo let's go create repository and now I can copy this URL here and let's navigate into our command line where the first thing I want to do is go ahead and do a git init because I want to initialize this repository next let's go ahead and say git remote add origin what I'm doing here is adding a remote repository calling it origin and defining it as the location of the hello world now we'll go ahead and add let's go git add so I'm going to add all these files into my local repo let's then go git commit So I'm going to commit the code and then the last thing I'm going to do is let's push the code into my git repository by going git push origin master like so. Now you'll see in the background if I refresh this page the code is there. So now we've got the code inside git. I can go back to subquery, click on projects, and what I'm going to do is log in. So this will use single sign-on by Git, and it will allow me to create a project where I want to provide the various information on the page. So let's go, uh, we'll call this subquery hello world. The subtitle, let's uh, give it something like this, and let's provide a description here. And this is the Git repository that I copied from here. So let's go ahead and hit create project. If you don't want this project to be seen in public, then select this. Otherwise, unchecking it makes it publicly available. I can also upload a logo if I want, but I won't do that for this demonstration. So let's go create project. And you can see that it's been created successfully. Uh, the network hasn't been assigned yet. 
that is because we haven't deployed the project yet. So we've got a couple of options. You can see here we must deploy the project before subquery is able to index our data. So we can either deploy to production or deploy to a staging slot. I'm going to deploy to production here. So let's hit deploy. And I've got a couple of things to fill out. I can select the hash of my particular version. In this drop down, because this is my first commit, I've only got one version. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll leave the network as default. I won't override anything. And I can choose previous versions if I want to. Maybe I've got some code that's only available in an older version. So I can do so, but what I'll do is I'll leave it at the newest version and hit deploy. Now what's going to happen now is you can see that subquery is processing this request and it's going ahead and provisioning the various servers and the infrastructure uh, ready to be used. Note down below we've got a query endpoint. I'll come back to this shortly. But sit back, relax, and I'll come back in a couple of minutes when this is done. Okay, so now you can see the subquery is up and running. The next thing we want to do is actually click on the three ellipses here and select View on Subquery Explorer. It's a bit hidden, but that's what you want to do. And what this does is opens up the very familiar playground where you can see we've got the network here, Polkadot, when it was last updated, when it was created, the link to GitHub, the commit version, and the query endpoint as well. You can also see above the syncing status. So let's go down here and hit the play or the run button. And what you'll see is that the query is made and the results are returned. So very quickly, you can see that we've taken the code, hosted it in subquery, and then we're able to make our queries on subquery itself. Now, what's also neat is that we can actually use this endpoint and do a query and perform a GET request as well. So what I'll do is I'll copy this, and I'll jump back into my terminal screen here. And I'll run a curl command. So let's go curl. And I'll paste in that endpoint. I'll go D for data. And then I'm going to submit query equals. And then I'm going to copy all of this out. Paste it here. Add the closing quotes. Hit enter. And then you can see the response coming back. Now, this is super useful for when you have maybe a Vue or a React front end and you want to go and get the data and display it to the user. So there you have it. A very quick example of how you can go ahead and run a subquery project and have it hosted in subquery itself very quickly and easily.